Hi, I'm Keith with Custom Works. This is our new three-point subframe connector. Um, it's called our three-point subconnect subframe connector because it has three mounting points. Most of our competitors' uh, subframe connectors only mount at the at the rear of the subframe and uh, the back frame rail. What we've done is we've added a, a third mounting location here. Um, it's optional; you don't have to use it. Um, but we found that due to the construction of the subframe connector, but having this third mounting point right here. Uh, at the, the bend of the material, um, it added a lot of rigidity and uh, enabled us to actually use a lighter gauge steel on our subframe connectors so we could take about 30% of the weight out of these and still be just as effective. What's involved with uh, mounting our subframe connectors is pretty simple. Um, first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that there's no fuel lines or wiring in the way of the rear subframe or here at the rear uh, frame rail, the subframe connector is going to mount right before it bends up and goes over the axle. Step one is to take the subframe connector and uh, you can basically just set it in place. Um, the, rear, the rear mount on our subframe connector is tapered. Um, the farther you slide it forward, the, t the tighter it will become on the, on the frame, the rear frame rail. On the early cars, what you're going to do is you're going to slide the subframe connector forward until it, it, it bottoms out on the back of the subframe. Um, on the 75 and later vehicles, there will probably be about a half inch gap between the subframe connector and, uh, the, sub, uh, and the subframe itself. So what you want to do is, 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 is put the subframe connector uh, to where it's touching the back frame rail up front, the subframe connector will be about uh, an eighth inch up from the bottom of the subframe and it can vary on your car depending on what mount you have in the car. Uh, we do recommend using our solid body mounts with our subframe connectors. Never use urethane or rubber bushings with our subframe connectors. It'll render them pretty much useless at that point. Um, so what you want to do is you want to maintain about a quarter inch gap. Be sure there's a quarter inch gap between the subframe connector and the floor pan uh, in any, any locations. Um, if you intend on using our third location point, um, there are two ways that you can, you can mount it. It can either be bolted or it can be welded. If you're going to bolt it, we recommend using self-tapping uh, sheet metal screws, 5 16 um, You will need to place a, a, about an eighth inch washer between it and the cross member that's built into the floor here. This is a good structural point and a good mounting point. So step one in, in welding in the connectors is going to be marking around the mounting points of the subframe connector and then removing the subframe connector and uh, basically cleaning and removing any paint or any undercoating from the frame itself and also around the edges of the subframe connector. When welding the subframe connector, uh, we recommend instead of fully welding around the bracket completely, just doing half inch stitch weld so if it ever needs to be removed. Uh, you know, you know, you can you can remove it. You probably only need about 40 to 50 percent actual weld coverage around the actual bracket itself to install it properly. In the front, we definitely recommend welding it. But if you do want to bolt it, so if you need to at some point remove the subframe, um, we recommend using two mounting bolts on both sides and bolt them independently of each other using a nut and bolt grade eight. Um, do not clamp the bolts through the subframe connector as the, the frame is just a C-channel and just spot welded together.